Hey guys, welcome out to the channel today. Um, as you can see, I got the Model A over here. Um, I finally ended up getting the whole entire body moved over onto my frame for the 30 frame. And I've just been trying to tinker with it here and there. Um, one thing I'm gonna do today is actually work on some of the body. I got a piece of sheet metal the other week and I'm trying to learn how to do the body work. The welding isn't all that great on this one right here. Um, I learned a lot on what I need to do, what I don't need to do. And then I came over here and I fabricated up this whole entire bottom section. And as you can see, the weld between the seam is a lot better. Um, and then I ended up riveting the outside skin right to the B pillar and i'm going to go ahead and try to reduplicate this on the other side except do something a little bit different for the panel on this panel i just did a butt weld onto it and i think on the other side i'm going to end up trying to do like a lap joint i think is what they call it so i'll actually have like a piece higher up on the inside and you won't be able to tell it I'll weld up a seam right here and then on the inside I also weld up the top. I went to pick up some metal. This little sheet of metal right here on Amazon I bought spur of the moment and it was like 40 bucks and I ended up finding some sheet metal for sale at a local metal place and it was like $68 a piece for a four foot by eight foot sheet. So I ended up picking up two sheets to uh, start working on this a lot um as you can see i'm gonna have a lot of like little patches uh like right here i gotta patch up this um anywhere weak i'm really gonna try to uh, start doing just to start filling in the body um i took measurements to to know exactly what i needed on this side so i'll go ahead and do the other one as well all right guys so i've gotten this kind of put up on blocks to see where i'm at with the height wise and as I'm doing this, I've noticed that this whole, I mean, th this is completely rotted right here. So I'm gonna end up replacing this upper portion of the um, B pillar, but everything from here down is fairly good up until the very bottom. And we'll just make the bottom the same as the other side we did. Um, one thing that I'm noticing though, is that I have a lot of play right here. So what I'm gonna do first is get this little rivet hole lined up with that hole. I'm gonna pop some rivets in these two spots and then start with that. And then um, I'm gonna start working on this bottom, I think, just so I can get that taken care of. And then those sides should be the same. So the way that I'm doing it is I know that the base of the two-door is supposed to be 24 and a quarter inches off of this line right here. And so as you can see, I don't even really have 17 good inches right there. So what I'm gonna do is probably chop it right at the 17 inch mark and see where it goes, see if it's solid behind here. Do 17 inches right there. And then whatever the 17 inches to the 24 and a quarter is, that's what I'll end up making my panel for its entire length. And we'll get that all formed up. That that forming portion is pretty easy. So what I gotta do is just get those closely lined up. I gotta actually get that rivet, or it, it's actually a nail that's in there. But this one's already got the hole in it. So I'll be able to push the side down and pull, push the B pillar up align those two holes and pop a rivet into it that way that portion stays together and then i'll be able to work on everything else if i need to get rid of the rivet i'll just drill that out um, the, the car side became super solid last time once i installed all the rivets on the the side to tie the pillar and the outer skin together we'll see how easy this comes out of there oh just like that all right so it was just the head that was in there so now we got a clean hole there clean hole there we'll try to line those up as best as possible 
and then put an actual rivet in there. All right, so I got two rivets put in here just to hold this together for right now. Um, I can always drill them out later if I need to do any kind of movement or anything, or when I need to work on this upper pillar portion. Um, one thing it did do is close up this seam right here. So this was spread apart and it actually closed that back up. Um, I am gonna have to work on some of it right here and right here on this little corner, as well as on the other side, but um, it's okay. I'm trying to learn as much as I can. And then as you go down here to the bottom, um, I took a, like a bendable ruler or yardstick that, that curves pretty good. And I came off of this seam 17 inches down and as you can see i have a strike mark right here this is not where i'm going to cut it right away um, i'm going to make the other panel first and then do the final cut um, but this kind of gives me an idea of what i'm working with so i'll have to make a 90 degree bend right here on this corner um, and then it'll come straight across on the last one on the other side i just left it straight down so that whenever i make this piece I'll just cut that out to fit. Um, looks like I'm gonna need like seven and a half or a quarter inches extra down here just to get this body almost the exact same as the other side. So there was a lot of rot. Um, you can see sub rail is rotted out as well. Need to make one of those or buy one. Um, I don't know, one or the other. Um, I do like that, it's still good, but sub rail is completely rotted out and I'm trying to do this the best i can without spending like a ton of money on it right away um and we'll see how it turns out so as i was telling you guys i got a four by eight foot sheet for 67 dollars where the other place i had another place that was uh going to charge me 260 some dollars for a four by four sheet so this is a lot better of a deal shop around I'm gonna cut out a corner out of this piece right here and then get it into the shop so I can actually work with it so I went ahead and got my piece of sheet metal cut out uh, use the angle grinder it's eight and a half inches by 17 and something uh, 17 and a half yeah 17 and a half inches uh, just scored it with a uh, all and then now what I'm gonna do is because when you cut it out with an angle grinder it leaves like a lip on it from pushing some of the metal over i'm gonna go ahead and take a flap disc clean that up and then we'll start looking at uh, putting it in the english wheel and getting it curved this way and then start folding over the edges and then putting the offset in on the top for or the top and the side i think no just the top for when we want to do that overlap. All right, so I got the English wheel uh, mounted up and uh, I've got like a slight radius die on here. I've had to do some work on this, trying to get it to uh, be a little bit better, make sure that the die and this bottom wheel stay pretty much lined up in uh, with each other. When I first got this, this top portion was actually twisted. Uh, that's why this is all black. It's because I had to heat this up and kind of bend it around. Uh, works pretty good now. Um, and all I'm gonna be doing right now is trying to get the shape of this to kind of match with what the car is. Um, I don't have any of those gauges or anything, so I'm just pretty much breaking it and trying to get a little bit of shape to it. And then we'll fold over this edge and this back side. So I'm still trying to learn how to use this thing and not uh, pinch my fingers in it. So, I don't know if you guys can 
see it right there, but it's starting to get like a slight curve in there. And what I did on the last one is I just kept on taking it out to the car, seeing how close it was to the already panel that's out there. Um, I'm gonna roll it just a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna take this out there and see what it looks right. like. So as you can see, if I take this and I put it up on the side of the car, it matches fairly well with that profile, but up on top, it does not. It uh, comes off the, the back side of it a little bit. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and on the back side, start curving it a little bit, like right in here. And then we should be able to start looking at bending that top and bottom. So I'm getting ready to go ahead and bend over my lip right here and here. And I've marked 5 8 inches in and 5 8 inches up. What I need to do is cut out this little square corner over here because when I fold them together, I can weld up that seam and then I'll ha I won't have any extra material right there. And I don't really have a break right now. So what I've done on this is I put this on the edge of the table and clamp it down with a thicker piece of metal and pretty much just hammer it over just like a break would do. All right, so this is the setup that I kind of came up with just to get that break on the edge so I can fold it over and get it pretty much clean. Uh, just clamps and then this thicker piece of metal on top. And I just use a, um, a hammer and just kind of lightly start going over it until it starts folding over the whole entire way. And then I tap it all completely flat then I flip the whole thing over and tap it all onto the top of the table. That way everything's nice and even. So now after hammering it all flat, you guys can obviously see I took that curve right out of there. So now we have like a straight edge. And that is where I have went ahead and purchased the uh, shrinker stretcher set uh, from Harbor Freight. And I'm just gonna go ahead and work it around that edge real quick just to get that curve back in there. All right, so I'm just gonna start right here on this little edge and Get that worked in there. And I'm not putting a whole bunch of pressure on there because I'm not looking to All right, so now I'm gonna check it again. And you guys can see that I've got the curve back into it. I might do it a little bit more right here on the top, I think, to match. Actually, I'm gonna go check it out on the car real quick. So I'm just looking at it. I've actually shrunk it a little bit too much right here, but it's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it how it is and we'll leave it like that all right so got my sheet metal here and i got my line laid out for where i need to do that offset i pulled out the uh, bead roller and we are going to get this side lowered behind so it'll tuck up behind the panel that's actually out there in the car and we'll see how well this goes and all right, let's try to see what's gonna happen.
Oh, hold on. All right, hold on. All right, back it up. Oh, this is not going to work right. Okay. okay. I think, I think I need to cut it off, like right here. Mm -hmm. And that should be fine. Let me, uh, let me do that real quick. All right, so as you guys can see now, I've put in a little bit of an offset. So I'll lay the actual sheet metal on the car on this side and then this will tuck up on the back side and then hopefully we'll get a fairly good seam right there. This is the first one I'm trying to do like this so we'll see what happens and hopefully it works out. All right guys, so the uh, plan here is that this is gonna butt up right like that. And then you can see this is gonna tuck up on the back side. The reason why I notched this out is for the B pillar. I didn't want something in there. The B pillar is supposed to sit up against this sheet, so I didn't want to get it in the way. So we're gonna tuck it up in there. I got my scribe line. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out real quick and just see what this looks like on the back side there. And then we should be able to start getting it clamped into place using the B pillar right here in this section. And also right here, I can clamp that overlap piece and then we'll see what it all looks like. All right, so I've got the panel overlapped. Uh, looks fairly good to me. Um, I see that I buzzed through this just a little bit. So this might be a little bit soft, but we're gonna try to still weld over to it and see what happens. Um, ground down the front to get some clean metal there. And as you can see, it's clamped flush right there. And I'll keep on working my way down. So I'll start on this end, weld, tack weld right here and then I'll move down, making sure that everything is good and squared up. I uh, took a measurement from the, the little uh, body line right here down to the bottom, and we are at 24 and a quarter inches, which matches up exactly to the other side. So that's good. And now the next part is just to weld it in place and hope everything turns out good. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and go on the inside and just hit up a couple welds in there and then we'll start slowly popping tacks along the whole entire side so that uh, it doesn't kind of warp or anything crazy like that. So I got the um, area tack welded, um, welded up and then I grounded the weld down. <clears throat> tried to use the hammer and dolly on it a little bit to kind of get them back even turned out better than the other side for sure uh still i gotta work on the hammer and dolly stuff i gotta figure that all out um had one area right here that kept popping through um after i welded it up though it, it became very solid like right around the hole just like a little pinhole i see one right here as well but for the most part everywhere else that i welded i didn't have anything blow through so that's good so now we got another solid piece right here and the next thing that I got to work on is trying to get this made and that will actually go down through here and run into the bottom and then we can rivet those two things together and then this area will become super strong again so I'm gonna go ahead and start getting my mark up for this I already have a piece that I can copy from the other side. All right guys, so I'm kind of cheating, but here's the uh, piece and it'll actually just sit in there 
way down here though and i'll make it this full width and then after i get it mounted i'll trim i'll line up where the straight edge is right here and then i'll cut it off and that's what my piece will be so we're gonna go ahead and get this made up this piece right here it's got to have an offset right here so that the uh, skin right here can sit into it and then it'll rest in the very very bottom right down here and then we'll drill some holes rivet them all together and then this bottom half of the b pillar and the uh, little panel patch will all be done for today i got the sheet metal i got one flat edge right here so i'm just going to line that up like so got a sharpie marker And then, how should I do this? I guess I'll reverse it back up to this way. This one I'll have to cut a flat side and a, uh, a curved side to it. But that's not a big deal. That's super easy. And then we'll also have to cut a, a straight piece right here so that I can uh weld it in here i was trying to figure out some way to stamp this out or something to fold it i couldn't think of an easy way so that's why i'm doing the three pieces one two and then a straight piece will be three and then we'll be done so i totally forgot to turn the camera back on for doing these little b pillar posts um here's the banana shape cutout or whatever you want to call it the little slight curve i made two of them and then made one straight piece as i showed that i was going to do and then I put this through the bead roller and got a slight offset in there. And that's where the uh, tacks or nails would be going for the wood to hold that in place. Um, now what I'm going to do is just tack weld this slightly in place around the back side. And then I will do the other one on top. And then I'll flip it over. From the outside, once it's all together, from the outside, I'll weld um, all the way around, and then we should be good to go. Got to get the B pillar cut out, and then we'll put this in place. Okay, so we got the uh, piece cut on the very bottom, so I can slide in there, welded it up. I got to do a little bit more grinding on it. But what I'm going to do now is actually drill through all these holes and rivet them, and then I will come down with a straight edge right through here and chop that off and make sure that's all nice and straight or at least blends into it and then this job or task will be done i got the um, piece put in welded in and it's all good to go now it's uh really solid um i actually got all the um, rivets in as well um, I had one spot that kind of wrinkled on me. I think I pulled it in too tight whenever I went to go do the rivet. And then this one is kind of out. So it's kind of got a weird little hump right here, but uh, I'm sure we can fix that eventually. But uh, that's where we're at. So I got two panels done on this thing now. And now I need to figure out what I need to do next. I may do the back one, the one on the very, very back. Cause it's, it's gone, it's all crinkled and gone. Or I might go ahead and try to start doing the sub rails or sub frame, whatever you want to call it. Because this is completely shot and it's not probably the safest thing to have in there right now with it. Um, it's not sturdy at all. And I don't know, I may do that next just to kind of Get a good base for this thing to actually start sitting on. So as you guys can see, the sun has finally set. Um, I also almost ran out of welding gas completely. It's like on the very bottom of the gauge. So I'm going to have to go out and get some more of that. But as far as the body work goes, I'm learning. This one was a little bit easier with the little overlap. It seems like I didn't have to worry about it burning through as much or I just got a better piece uh, where the rusted metal was i don't know it could be either or having something on the back side really help uh weld everything together worked but other than that uh, i got to use the bead roller so i'm getting better at that as well 
and also getting the curve of the of the metal so shaping it is all what the technique is about and it's what i'm trying to get learned that's what i'm trying to learn so if you guys have any questions comments uh suggestions tips whatever um let me know leave them in the comments down below hope you guys enjoyed the video um, it's been a long day trying to get this done and it's only like one little panel so it's going to take a while to do everything that needs to get done i really want to get the base of the car built up first and then i can start like going around the actual body and cutting out pieces of metal to uh, redo some of the bad spots but this is a big learning project so thanks guys for watching i'll see you guys later